Yo, K Pace Guy here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to episode 6 of 7 Reasons Why. But this time it's going to be a special 7 Reasons Why. This is 7 common mistakes you're making in your home theater. Let's get right into it. Now, you may not make any of these seven mistakes that I name, but these are the most common seven mistakes that people make when building their home theater. So for number seven on this list, it's gonna have to be buying home theater products from companies that are known for their televisions. Samsung, LG, Panasonic, Sony, they all have really fantastic televisions. They also have compatible sound bars and things like that to go with them. Now the issue with buying companies made for their TVs is they're usually, their sound, bar, their sound bars are usually made for that specific TV. They usually have features that are only, that only work when you use it with a compatible television. Now LG has their short throw projector that you can just place anywhere and shine a big picture on a wall. And that's so cool and I almost thought about getting one of those. And you know, Vizio and LG and Samsung, they all have their sound bars that go underneath their TVs, usually using the same material or same kind of color to match perfectly with their TV so that it's integrated seamlessly. But the issues that you, you run into when you buy companies name for their TVs is build quality and sound quality suffer. They don't use the latest technology, high-res audio, Dolby Atmos, DTSX. They don't use those kind of things because they know that the average consumer just wants to upgrade their TV sound just a little bit, but not a lot. So they're going to give you tall boy speakers, little thin plastic speakers, wireless with um, four-inch drivers with absolutely no bass, wireless connectivity, a small six-inch subwoofer, which gets down to 45 hertz. They're going to give you that kind of thing, and that's why you want to stay away from companies that are known for their televisions. Now, mistake number six most commonly made is cable mess. And in the past video, I've talked about how important it is to manage your cables. That includes HDMI cables, RCA cables, speaker wire, anything that you use to connect your home data to anything needs to be managed. When you run into a clutter of mess, the first issue that you're gonna have is safety. Any wire that's been pulled or tugged, worn down over time, you start to expose that copper wire that runs that signal from point A to point B. These things, if enough electricity is generated through them, can cause a fire. Another easy and obvious reason to worry about cable mess is organization. When it comes time to moving your home theater to one place to another, tidying up things, it's really hard to know what cable goes to what speaker what HDMI is plugged up to what console or DVD player. It's really hard and you have to sit here and untangle all of it and in the midst of untangling your giant ball of wires, you're tugging and you're pulling on your cables and of course you're shorting its lifetime. So the most common mistake number six is gonna to have to be cable mess. Number five, the fifth most commonly made mistake in building a home theater it's going to have to be putting speakers inside cabinets, inside bookshelves, things like that that enclose your speaker. And the number one reason to, that this is a reason on the channel is that when you box your speaker, you're adding another box to your speaker. So you have your driver inside a cabinet and you have the cabinet of that driver inside of your cabinet. It's adding a whole bunch of boundary gain. You're changing the acoustics of the speaker. It's almost like doing this and totally modifying the way that you sound. Now, I didn't change the way that I talk, but me putting my hand over my voice amplified my voice at a certain frequency that otherwise you don't desire. So when you put your speaker inside of a cabinet or a bookshelf, you're adding a different, totally different acoustic property to your speaker. And that can lead to you thinking that your speaker sounds bad, you would have to lower your frequencies on your receivers, so now your one speaker sounds totally different than your other speaker because the cabinet resonance is so different than the way you have your other speaker placed. You just, you just add a whole bunch of different acoustic problems that you don't want to deal with. You also add extra reflections. So not only is your speaker bouncing around in your room, it's bouncing around in your cabinet. And you can't really treat that. 
Another reason you don't want to put your speakers in a cabinet, although it's kind of convenient to put a bookshelf speaker in a cabinet, it doesn't always sound the best. You really, what the frequencies that you affect the most when you put it inside a cabinet is the low end. The bass suffers when you put it in there. It's bloated, it's a little bit, um, it's peaking out of certain frequency that you otherwise wouldn't like it. It might sound a lot more boomy. Now for smaller drivers, that might be okay. It gives it a little bit more oomph. But for everyday usage and things like that, you might not want to put it in there. As far as Bluetooth speakers go and, and you know, like iHomes and, you know, docks that you use to put your phone on, your iPods if you still have one, those are okay. You can get away with that kind of thing. It's just a little iPod Bluetooth speaker. It's fine. But when you're putting a home theater speaker in a bookshelf, you're adding a lot of stress to you, a big headache. You got a lot of tuning to do. It's just a big mess. That's going to be common mistake number five. Common mistake number four is gonna to have to be seating, your seating arrangement, where you have your couch or your, your movie theater chairs. And this is a very important topic, but it's coming in at number four. When you have your home theater, let's say you have an actual built-in dedicated home theater room, you have your home theater and you have a couple chairs here and you have a couple chairs right behind it. You wanna make sure that you elevate those chairs so that the people who are sitting behind you have a clear line of sight obvious right but sometimes it's really hard to do you really have to plan these things out if you don't know how you're going to elevate your seating position then you have to try to plan what am i going to do am i going to get risers am i going to build my own platform so i can raise it it's very important to make sure that everybody in the in the venue has a clear line of sight to the screen or projector also seating is important because you don't want to block a projector some people have theirs mounted on, on the ceiling. Some people have their seating on a stand, maybe on the wall, or there's a, a, a rack that you have it sitting on. You wanna make sure that your seating position and any heads that are sitting on the seat aren't blocking this line of sight from the projector to the screen. Now, it's not as serious when you're watching TV because obviously the TV is emitting its own picture, but a projector needs to throw that light to a screen. You want to make sure people are not walking in front of it to get to their seat, people are not sitting in front of it. It's also very important because where your sweet spot is, is decided on how your system is set up. So if you have your couch sitting in a corner, you now have to angle all your speakers and your TV in a corner. You have to, it's really hard to place it. You kind of want to put your couch in a good spot so that you can try to get as close to an ideal setup as you can. So you have equal, equal distance from left, center, right, as you do from your surrounds, things like that. You want everything to be even. You don't want your couch way off to the far right of the room and your TV's way over here to the left of the room. And now you have a really weird, odd room and you're getting some really weird sounds and you hear your right speaker way more than you hear your left speaker. You gotta crank up the decibel level for your left side of your room because you're so far to the right of your room. So make sure that when you're doing seating placement, that it's in a good spot where you can find a, a, a common ground, a good meet in the middle between good seating and good speaker placement. That's going to be common mistake number four. So we have an honorable mention before we get to common mistake number three. And the honorable mention is going to have to be surge protector. And this is actually really, really big and I didn't want to leave it off in these lists of seven common mistakes. You need a surge protector, whether it be just a small strip of six outlets or it's a dedicated power conditioner, you need to protect your electronics. If you're gonna invest money in a $2,000 TV or a $2,000 receiver or anything to help your home theater run, you need to protect it. Not only from storms, random surges, from lightning, things like that, but in any given moment, if you're plugged up directly to an outlet, a random surge spike could come in and fry everything that you have. You don't know. It could be completely sunny outside, no rain, and that doesn't matter. If there's a random surge that comes through your house, it could blow whatever's plugged up to the outlet. Very, very important. I can't stress enough to protect your sound system, protect your visuals do all of that not only does it protect it it's convenient you plug one outlet into the wall and then you automatically have a strip of six more outlets so what that allows you to do is to plug more things up in that one section it's nothing worse to have an outlet with two outlets one at the top one at the bottom so now i have one for my tv and maybe one more other thing but i have four other things that need to be plugged up when you get a surge protector, you're protecting all your electronics and you just unlock yourself five, six, maybe eight more plugs that you can use without stringing 
cables all across the wall trying to reach the next outlet. So it's very convenient and it's very, very important. That's my honorable mention, surge protectors. Now number three, the most common mistakes made. This one is a big one for me and it's screen size, whether it's a TV or projector. You can really harm yourself when you get too big of a television or too big of a projector, whether it be your eyesight or your neck. Looking up at a screen that's too big is so uncomfortable and it ruins your movie or gaming experience. Same thing with having too small of a TV. If your room is really big or you're at a very far back viewing distance, you need a TV that's adequate for you. So it's very important to have a TV that fits the room. Having too small of a TV adds eye strain, you're constantly doing this, and it's actually bad for you to squint like that. If you have to squint, then whatever you're looking at is too small, or you may need glasses. If it's too big, it's gonna be way too bright, you're gonna slowly deteriorate your eyesight, you're gonna need glasses in the future. It's almost equivalent to sitting up to a screen this close. It's just not something that you wanna do. So make sure that whenever you're looking at new TVs, looking at projector screens and sizes, make sure that your room makes sense for the size that you're getting. There's nothing worse than to get a really nice TV, really nice 4K projector for $1,500, and then realize that your room doesn't fit it. That's definitely gonna be common mistake number three. Now we're getting to the last couple reasons slash common mistakes, and this is gonna be number two. And this one is really, really, really a problem that I see a lot whenever I'm looking at different home theaters or I'm helping people build their own. And it's gonna be speaker balance, speaker level. Also, it's gonna be speaker distance kind of works hand in hand. So when I say speaker level, when I say unbalanced speaker level, I'm meaning one channel being louder than the other by a lot, not a little. Most receivers come with calibration mics. I have them all over the channel. If you haven't seen them, you can find them anywhere on the internet. Most receivers come with the mic. And what it's fair to do is to try to help you set your sound system to the best possible performance that it can have. Of course, you're gonna have to go back and tweak it for your own hearing, and sometimes it gets things wrong, but it's a general start, a general idea of what it should be set on. Some people would just completely ignore this. Also, if you're still having a legacy receiver that doesn't have any kind of calibration or subwoofers that don't come with calibration mics, you have to manually go in there and change your settings. Some people just plug in the speakers and turn it on, and then their signal channel is like this this loud, but then their surround sound effects are on you know plus 10 dB, and you can barely hear what they're saying. And they're thinking, oh, this sounds great, but when it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't. It's very important to make sure that your speaker level is matched. You want all speakers to be playing at the same frequency, or excuse me, at the same volume level, so that it reaches your ear at the same time. Also, I said distance was kind of a factor. It is. Now, when you're sitting far away from a speaker, when you're sitting this far away from one, and the one's right here, you wanna change your volume level because this one can't be playing at the same level as this one because not only are you gonna hear this one first being close to you, you're also gonna hear it a lot more than this one over here. You wanna actually have this one probably a little bit lower in volume than this one because you're farther away. Then you want to make sure you have your distance set so that it delays that sound to your ear opposed to this one. This one needs to play the sound for this one so that it meets both ears at the same time and it sounds even. It kind of fools the brain, fools the ear to think that you're sitting in the middle between one speaker and the other. That's what the calibration is for. So number two is definitely going to have to be speaker level balancing. All right guys, so number one on most commonly made mistakes. I hope you've tried to guess it. You probably got it wrong. And I'm gonna tell you what it is right now. Number one on the seven most common mistakes made in building a home theater is going to have to be reading the manual. And I know my guys out there say, I don't need no manual. Guys don't read the manual. And that's a problem. Don't wait to read the manual when something goes wrong. Read the manual right off the bat. Not only just so you know how to do things, how to set things up, but how to, to see what it does. So one really good example for why you should read the manual is because a lot of things nowadays have a lot of features. And there's things that you may not have 
known it could do and or how to access it. And a lot of times when I'm doing videos for you guys and I'm opening new things, it's for the first time. And of course, I've done my research and reviews on the product that I bought, but I don't necessarily know how to use it. So it's usually the first time I get it. So I usually take the time to read the manual so that I know absolutely everything that it can do. For example, your AV receiver is, a, is obviously a good one to use as an example. AV receivers do a lot. Video processing, audio processing, setup calibration, speaker level, this, that, and the other. And you may not know what some of it means or what some of it does. And in the manual, 50 pages, or CD-ROM, whatever you have, it's gonna tell you absolutely everything that that unit can do and how to do it. Most importantly, it tells you how to access it. Usually, men don't like reading the manuals, and I used to be one of those guys. I don't like reading instructions. Just give me my tools and get out of my way. I'll figure it out on my own. But you, you may be able to figure things out and put things together, but you may have not known that it could do this or does this. Maybe there's a standby mode. Maybe there's a energy saving mode. Maybe there's this, that, and the other that you didn't know. Also, when you run into issues later on down the road, like my receiver not turning on, there's troubleshooting techniques inside manuals that tell you what you can possibly do to fix your problem before you have to pack it up and send it away. Something that you probably could have done on your own that you just paid 50, 60 to $100 for somebody else to pay on top of shipping depending on how far your service repair people are. So it's very important to read the manual. It's very important to keep the manual too. So if you're just two years away for your new LG TV, go, go get it. Go get it. That's number one. All right guys, that was seven of the most commonly made mistakes in building a home theater. Let me know down in the comments how many of those seven mistakes have you made. Now be honest, because we've all made some. Maybe you made some that I didn't name. Feel free to put that down in the comment section of the mistakes that you might find funny that you've made or some of the serious ones that you've made that cost you a little bit. It really helps everybody else know what to look for and be aware of so that they don't have the same problems in the future. If you enjoyed this video or found this video beneficial, please leave a like, comment, and think about subscribing. I have a lot of cool things coming up on the channel. I got my subs hooked up. I got an amp on the way. There's gonna be a lot of cool things. Also, I have a tech surprise for you. I'm, I'm, I'm gathering up some of the coolest home theater tech that you can have and I'm unboxing it. And a lot, of the, a lot of the things that I'm getting, I'm giving away. Maybe an Echo Dot, maybe a pair of really nice headphones, maybe a gaming headset, just anything that is really, really cool to have that can enhance your home theater. I will be unboxing a lot of different things coming up here in the recent future. So make sure you're subscribed and push that bell button so that you're not late. Hey, face guy out.